Hi, my name is Boris and in today's beginner's tutorial I'm about to show you how to use the three main Ableton synthesizers and how to make basic patches that are incredibly useful as well. We'll be making bases, leads, plugs, pads, and you'll see that often it's just one change of parameter that can turn one sound into another type. Just a quick reminder, if you enjoy what you're seeing in this tutorial, make sure to subscribe. We're making all kinds of Ableton beginners tutorials like this one. And if you'd like to learn Ableton Live a little bit more in depth, check out our Ableton Beginners course, which is going to give you all the knowledge you need to confidently start building and finishing your first tracks. All right, so let's get into live. I have my favorites saved over here, but we can go to Instruments and choose Analog as our first synthesizer. And let's just get started. So the purpose of this tutorial is to show you that making sounds in Ableton's built-in synths is extremely easy in fact, and that the same basic sounds can be achieved in any of these synths really fast. So other than analog, we're going to be taking a look at wavetable and then at operator as well. But for now, let's stick with analog. It's a typical emulation of an analog synthesizer. Sometimes this type of synths uh, would be called subtractive synths because of the way the filter is set up here. And just to get started, let me show you the different sections we have. So this is the oscillators or sound generators section. So we have oscillator one, noise and oscillator two. Then we have an amplifier section. So two amplifiers over here so we can turn that on and we have filters in the middle and then and then in the center there's a display whenever we click on a certain tab the center display gives us additional features over here we have some modulation section and at the end some global settings so i disabled everything but oscillator one and amp one so we have just one source oscillator one going into amplifier one which basically allows our sound to be heard now let's also change the shape here. Let's go to the sine wave and maybe just let's change the octave to zero. And we can actually use a MIDI keyboard or if you don't have a MIDI keyboard, you can enable this button over here and play with your computer keyboard from A to L. But I have the MIDI keyboard over here and I can play some notes. I can make it louder as well. What we have is the most basic sub bass. The single sine wave can be used actually already in a track and it serves a very nice purpose. It adds some very nice sub frequencies if we play the very low notes. So it's the most basic bass sound you can have. And I encourage you to just play around with that. If we go higher, it's going to be a bit more like a flute or like a whistle sound. And sometimes that's all you need. So let's just click on the amp section right now. What we have here is an envelope. So the envelope allows us to shape the volume over time of our oscillator. So for example, we can add something called release. That's just going to make our sound last longer as if we were holding a pedal on uh, when playing a piano. And maybe we can go into the global tab, so on the right, and change the voices to max, so 32. And now we can play more than one note at a time. So we have the most basic plug sound. We can play around. It's very soft because of the way the sine wave sounds. And we could actually also add some reverb. So we can go to audio effects and choose reverb. We can increase the decay time a bit and we are going to have some reverb here. And it already sounds very soft and you can use this in maybe a lo-fi track or have this in the background of your track because this is not too present. It's a very cool soft sounding lullaby sort of sound. So that's sound number two. All we changed is the release of the amplifier and then we also added some more voices so that we can play more than one note at the time. Okay, so let's add a bit more interest here harmonically. Let's change the shape of the sine wave to a saw wave. And this is going to be very aggressive sounding. So I'll just turn down the volume here. We can also reduce the release here. Let's just go down almost all the way. Let's just add the filter section here. So enabling that and let's hear what that sounds like. Uh, 
and we can already play around with that. If we go all the way back to mono here in the global tab, we'll be able to play a very simple lead sound. If we change up the frequency knob, uh, we will be able to change the timbre as we are playing the sound. So by default, actually, if you have a MIDI controller, this would be knob number one. So I'm just going to play around with that. And as you can hear, it works both as a lead sound and a bass sound as well, if we go to the lower registers here. Okay, so now let's mess around with the filter section. Maybe if we lower the frequency here and play some low notes, we can add some movement to this frequency knob and make it sound more interesting. Right now, it's just very, almost like the sine wave we had at the beginning. And now maybe we can just add uh, this envelope control. And maybe also decrease the sustain. What's going on here is that we have the envelope which basically moves this frequency knob for us. We don't see this, but we can definitely hear that there are a lot more high frequencies at the beginning of the sound. And this effect lasts 600 milliseconds as the decay parameter here. And this already sounds like a very cool bass sound. We can use this in a track definitely. Let's do something else. Let's go to multiple voices on the global tab and increase the release here. And maybe let's just decrease the envelope here a little bit and let's play some other higher notes. Maybe let's increase the frequency as well. We have a very basic plug. So all I changed is I added polyphony, so more than one voice, and then I messed around with the amount of the envelope. So this env control and the frequency knob. And the last step for analog is that we're going to be making a pad. Uh, let's disable the envelope here and let's maybe choose a different curve. So 12 dB per octave instead of 24. So that's going to be giving us a bit more high frequencies. And also let's add some attack here. So let's fade the sound in quite gradually. We have a pad sound already, but we can add some unison. Maybe also change the voices of the unison to four over here in the global tab. And we have a grand sounding unison soul wave pad. So analog is very, very simple. You can make all of these patches that I showed you much more complicated with external effects, more oscillators and different modulation possibilities. For now, we are done with analog. Uh, let's disable reverb and remove it. And we are going to be taking a look at wavetable. So let's go to instruments, wavetable, and it loads up like this. So we have some basic shapes here from sine wave to triangle wave. This is a saw wave and a square wave. So from the least harmonically rich to the most. So let's play just like we did with the analog synthesizer, uh, just a basic sub bass. This is incredibly simple. Straight out of the box, we have a sub bass. Number two, let's just add some reverb and maybe add some release here on the amplifier section. And I'll just make this into a sine pluck. Maybe we also need polyphony. Let's make that into a saw lead. So clicking on the saw wave here and reducing the frequency of the filter. Going into mono mode. And that's perfect. Uh, so that is also a, a bass sound, very simple. Step number four is going to be adding an envelope to the frequency. And that's a bit trickier here. You need to go into the matrix tab. You need to click on the frequency knob. This knob appears at the bottom. So filter one frequency. You need to go into some of the envelopes here. For example, envelope two isn't doing anything at the moment. And you just need to click on it and drag it up to uh, add some um, modulation here. So let's hear what that sounds like, but we just need to lower the sustain on the second envelope. So we have a very basic bass sound. If we disable mono, uh, we can turn this into a plug. 
Maybe let's just add a bit of release here as well on the second envelope. Sounds perfect to me. Another thing we can do is just add unison. So classic unison, uh, add some voices. We have three voices. We can go all the way up to eight, crank the amount. Maybe let's just remove this envelope. So double clicking on this box right here. We can move the frequency knob now and just we will have a basic unison pad. So as you can hear and see, this synth sounds really amazing and it's also quite simple. The matrix tab could be confusing at first, but once you get used to clicking on your sound and finding the right envelope or LFO to assign it to, it's really, really simple and actually very logical. Uh, you also have more oscillators here, so oscillator 2 and the sub oscillator, but just to get started, we can just use the basic shapes of oscillator 1. Right, so synth number 3 is going to be operator, I'll disable reverb and stretch Straight out of the box, it is also going to give us a single sine wave. And this gives us a perfect sub bass to use in the track. So here are some sound generators and here are all the other parameters. So LFO, filter section, pitch envelope and the global tab. And if we click oscillator A here, you can see that we have an envelope here and we can just add release over here. And we have a basic plug already. Adding reverb. And we have a basic sign plug. Now let's turn that into a lead. So making this mono, clicking on the global tab, voices to one. Uh, let's change this oscillator to a saw wave. So saw D would be the most complete harmonically saw wave over here. If we move knob number one, this also gives us the frequency knob. And as you can hear, this also works perfectly nice with lead sounds as well as some bass sounds. Now, if you would like to turn it into a bass, uh, we can decrease the frequency here and maybe add an envelope here. So if we click on the frequency knob or just the filter section, you can see that we have an envelope over here. And here is the setting where it allows us to add the envelope. So we can drag this up, this percentage value under envelope. Maybe let's just increase the decay. We have some resonance applied here, so this sounds a bit like a 303 pattern. We can decrease that and add even more of the envelope. And we have quite a basic bass sound from a soul wave. We can also add in some more voices and play some higher notes. Maybe let's just mess around with some of the envelopes here. So adding maybe some release or just adding some decay and release on the filter as well, just like this. And we have the most basic plug sound. Now to finish it off, we don't actually have a great unison option here, just like in wavetable and analog. But we can do this as well because the synth is an FM synth and that just basically means that these other oscillators will not go independently but they will modulate or change the timbre of oscillator A. We can change that from going one into another all the way to the last one which gives us all the different oscillators playing independently. We can also right click on the second oscillator, copy from oscillator A and do the same thing on oscillator C and D. Now we have four of the same saw waves playing, but we can detune them slightly. And all you need to do is just add a bit of fine tuning here. So changing the fine tune of all of these, and that is going to give us some unison. And maybe disabling the envelope of the filter and just, and just letting more of the sound through the filter. So as you can hear the timbre changed, we now have a unison sound. This is not the easiest thing to do. You need to adjust all of these fine tunings of each oscillator individually. It also gives you the most flexibility. <laughs> With these four voices, you can pretty much tune them however you want. All right, so I hope that after watching this tutorial, this gives you enough inspiration to go out and explore these different synthesizers. If you would like to learn Ableton more in depth, we are running a music production academy 
with start to finish courses on making tracks in various genres, as well as the Ableton Beginners course in which you can learn all the necessary basics of production. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. If you enjoyed this video, leave us a like and write us a comment and I will see you in the next tutorials. Hi, this video is sponsored by us. If you like these tutorials and want to support the channel, check out our website packed with online courses and professional sound packs. If you want to cut years of your learning curve, check the PML Beginner to Advanced Music Production program for Ableton Live. You will know Ableton inside out and learn how to write, produce, mix and master complete tracks. You learn step by step at your own speed from an empty file to professional production, as if we're sitting side by side in the studio. Thank you for listening and now let's get back to your tutorial.